Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Thanks to the El Nino winter, we're back in a boat. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, this mild winter that we've had thus far has given us opportunities that we've never had before. Can you believe this? We got the boat out, open water fishing up on the Fox River in Green Bay. And one thing I want to talk about, Caleb, this Fox River in Green Bay, the shad come in in the fall and the walleyes follow. Is that the deal? Yeah, that is the deal. And, you know, there's plenty of warm water discharges. Those shad will key in, key in on and those walleyes will be right behind them. And it's really kind of fun. I mean, and seriously, we've done ice fishing shows already this winter, but when you can escape the ice and get out in a boat, it makes it a lot of fun this time of year. Especially with these mild temperatures. Yeah, and we got special guests today. I'll introduce Chris McGillis. He's always with us, you know, but he's a good angler. And who do you have? I got my buddy Brock from Kenosha. So the Kenosha boys against the Milwaukee boys. That'll work. Hey, we'll have fun today, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, folks, the show we're using, how we're using it, all of that coming up right after this. Yes, I'm bullet. Look, pull that yeah. up. There you go. You've proven that that will call fish in. Yeah, there's no no. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Oh, oh look oh, at yeah. that. There you go. Hi, I'm Pete Mayna, and I think most people agree that rust sucks. What I use to help prevent rust and unrust things is Amsoil MP, Amsoil Metal Protector. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyer. John, you, you've got to know me. I mean, I'm a really passionate person. Everyone on my staff is, everyone on my team is. Um, you know, we are passionate about what we do. Helping somebody out, uh, protecting them, doing everything we can to help tell their story, to make sure they're treated fairly with integrity and with respect, and get a fair resolution, whatever that is for the client. I mean, that's extremely important to us. That's really all that matters. All right, welcome back, folks. Caleb is going to be the first to connect, and here yeah. he is. We got ourselves a nice walleye. Yeah, that is. Good and, start and you know, the morning. So, Caleb, a lot of these fish are in here for. They come in in the fall and stay in here all winter. Yeah, these fish will be in here all winter. You know, these uh, they're starting to push up the river. There's a lot of warm water discharges. People can focus on around these parts, and uh, usually we're ice fishing at this time, so we're kind of treating it just just like how we'd be ice fishing and just pulling small little plastics and minnows along the bottom. Boy, I'll tell you what, you're hot, buddy. Let's see oh, what we got here. God, I'm gonna oh, need that's a, net a netter walleye right there. That that's yeah. a netter. Good fish, yeah. Let's see them here. Barely hooked. Hey, there you go. Pass them right up to yeah. Caleb, if you would there, Chris. That's a beautiful walleye there, Caleb. Isn't it, buddy? That's a beautiful fish, like you said. And, uh... All I'm doing is slow lifts, and the, the first few bites were actually when I was picking it up, they were hitting it, you know, kind of pinning it. This one, boy, did I feel it. It was coming back down fluttering, and I felt them thump that one. Is it unusual to catch walleyes on plastics in this cold water? No, not really. I mean, they're an aggressive fish. Yeah, that's a beauty right there. 
And these are all bay run fish, so they're pretty good to eat. Yeah, for the most part, these are all fish, like we said, migrating up river, hitting these warm water discharges, looking for bait. Now, I got to tease you a little bit. You were going, I haven't <laughs> had a bite for a while. And then all of a sudden, bang, right? Oh, man, this is fun, John, to be fishing in January in the boat. Uh, can you believe it, oh, buddy? Oh, it's so good, I man. know, and that looks like a pretty good walleye. Yeah, she's staying down. Somebody she's got that clam handy? Somebody oh, yeah. that clam. Oh my gosh, Chris McGillis, look at there that we go, baby. walleye. Wow, hand that to Chris there, and boy, is that a beautiful fish. Caleb, this is incredible, buddy. It really is. is. And wait do you see how this fish inhaled that plastic. Look at that, right Hold down. Hold him up high, Chris. Right down the throat, John. Yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's incredible. And uh, the, the bite, you had a bite before that was just kind of a stop in it. What did this one do? This one clobbered it. Did you, it, really? I knew right away. The suck in, boom, clanked. It was great. Yeah, hold him vertical. So, yeah, that's a beautiful walleye. Beautiful fish, John. Can you, seriously, buddy, you and I should be ice fishing, right? <laughs> I know we should be, but I'll take this. No, this is it. actually pretty cool, you look know? That fish. That, and look at the beautiful coloring. That is a bay run fish. Now, that would be good to eat if you wanted to keep a fish, What Chris. do you think, John? 22, 23? Ah, 21, 22, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, buddy. Oh. Nice job, Chris McGillis. Thanks, buddy. We're on it. Kind of interesting, folks. Those last couple of fish were caught on plastics, and I see you've got a paddle tail on there, and I've got a Kalen's jerk minnow. But water temperatures around 36, 37 degrees. You can still go with the plastics. Yeah, John, and the reason I went with the paddle tails just for a little bit more vibration down there, a little more sound for those fish to key in on it. And you like the bright colors. I mean, the the Fox River isn't that clear. Yeah. So you go with the chartreuses and the bright colors. Yes, chartreuses in the pinks and you know today we uh, have a beautiful sunny day so that I think the sun's really working with us. Oh there we go. Hey look at that Chris McGillis the outdoorsman's personal injury lawyer has got two in a row here. Another nice one John. Okay another, another nice, nice one. one. Oh yeah, yeah oh, get, oh that is a nice walleye. All go. right good job there McGillis. Paddle tail again John. Yeah you got to turn around and hold that guy up for the folks on the coloring on these fish is just gorgeous too you know that look at that what is that caleb about that's all of 18 inches 18 that's inches a, that's a thick fish been eating well in here so what are you doing with the, your retrieve there chris john throwing it out letting it hit the bottom giving it a big pump following it back down with my rod tip yeah pumping it again and they usually hit it on that fall when it hits Hold the that bottom. up vertical. Look at now look at how he ate that too. Oh, I mean, those out. fish are eating, man. Beautiful fish. Good job. Hey, here we go. Here we go. I'll, I'm gonna show you guys what I did here. I don't know if I can flip this guy. Here yeah, he is, here um, he is, here he is. There we go. Hand him back here. I'll tell you what I did there, folks. And uh this is kind of interesting this time of the year. You always buy some minnows, right, Caleb? Always show up with minnows this and, time of year. And what I did here, folks, I hope I can get that minnow out of his mouth. But you can see what I did. I put a little piece of a of a Kalen's jerk minnow on there, followed by the minnow, and he sure creamed that. I mean, that's a nice walleye right there, isn't it? That's a beautiful fish. Yeah. What do you think of that idea, though, of going with the minnow real slow? Real slow, and like you said before, we're almost kind of treating it like ice fishing. These fish are pretty lethargic right now. Right. If I can get them out of that net yeah. there. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Brock's got one on. Flip him in, we don't, oh yeah, my jig was caught. Look at that walleye. Caleb, go up there and hold the one I just caught and hold them together. I mean, those are two beautiful winter walleyes, open water fishing. Hey, Brock. Are you enjoying yourself? Awesome time, John. Thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're it. from Kenosha. How many kids you got, buddy? Uh, I got two, John. How two old? Little, two little boys. Uh, Graham is two, and Mitchell just turned one. We you don't have Christmas. them fishing yet, do you? Not yet. Soon. Hey, Caleb. Good time, buddy. Absolutely. This is what I'm doing because the water's kind of murky up here on the Fox River, folks. That last walleye caught, just put a little piece of that plastic on there and dead hook a shiner minnow and cast out and work it real, real slow. Do you even jig it, uh, Caleb, or just drag it? You know, John, with the paddle tail, I'll jig it, but like you said, you got the minnow back there. It, it, it's not a bad thing just to drag it on the bottom, you know, and those fish will pin it or suck it right up off the bottom. Hey, Caleb, what are you doing? John, I wish I could tell you. I'm, is all it I know a, is I'm fighting a big fish. Well, there's big cats in here, there's big carp in here, and he has got your rod bent over. 
He is dogging. Yeah. Well, we'll turn that camera off, and if it's anything interesting, we'll turn it back on, all right? Sounds good. What is that? It is a big Oh, my gosh, it's uh, a giant flathead catfish. Holy cow, look at that, Caleb Zorn. No, nice man. job, buddy. And you know something, folks? The Fox River up here in Green Bay has got some huge flatheads and some very big channel cats. And a lot of guys will target them in the summertime, you know. But, Caleb, I, I had no idea. That's a 20-some pounder, buddy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now let him get organized here and we'll show that to you. But he actually bit that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Where'd you, what were you using there? Same thing, paddle tail. Same thing. Wow. Wait till you see the size of this big old boy. We didn't film that fight, folks, which actually lasted about 15 minutes. And look at the size of that. Now, what is this one again, buddy? John, this is a flathead. A flathead. Yep. Very it, prehistoric fish. Yeah. Very cool. That is so cool. And I know years ago I fished them out here at night one time with cut suckers. Yep. And boy, we got some big ones. But that's a dandy right this there. Is a big fish. And th they will actually, folks, th you know, a lot of guys use use live suckers that they'll they are a meat eater right oh, yeah definitely a game yeah. fish type these are a game fish they are definitely big hunters down there yeah what do you think that one weighs honestly i don't know probably close to 20 pounds at least how was that fight just nothing just stayed down there and yeah. kept dogging and dogging and dogging that is cool well that's the biggest catfish that i've caught in the winter time <laughs> <laughs> You know, Chris, you fish with me enough to know that we don't go anywhere without... Johnsonville's. You're right. And today I got a special treat for you. You know, uh, football season playoffs are coming up. The Super Bowl is coming up. And one of the greatest things to have on hand is Johnsonville garlic summer sausage. Now, before you take a bite, let me just tell you, Johnsonville has a secret recipe with great spices. And then they naturally hardwood smoke this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely wonderful. Take a bite. Oh, oh, it's good. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's I, fresh. Your kids eat that? My kids love this. School lunches, John. Yeah. My wife makes this for the kids, puts it in their lunches. They can't get enough of it. John's from Little Garlic Summer Sausage. Look for it at your favorite retailer today. We were fishing the Fox River in Green Bay, a two-hour drive from Milwaukee, three hours from Chicago, and four hours from Minneapolis. This fight is between you and the fish. The lake may get unruly, but our motors quiet the noise. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Folks, I drive 40,000 miles a year. I use Amsoil Synthetic Oil for two reasons. I don't have to change my oil for 25,000 miles. My truck runs better and I get better gas mileage. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here, the Johnson, just spray it right off. And obviously, you got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. I think I have one of your catfish on here, Caleb. John, that's the nice thing about these oh, white trucks. Holy cow. Look at that, buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So they'll hang right in the same areas as the walleyes, obviously. Yeah, we were coming down and I was looking at the side imaging there on the hummingbird and I uh, <laughs> I, saw I, I stopped and I said, John, I think there's a whole school oh, of catfish. Oh, this is going to be a while, buddy. Oh. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, I got one of those Pendu jigs on, you know, those Kalen Pendu jigs? And they don't have, their hook is a little weak. It's made for walleyes, so this will be interesting. You can turn the camera off and bring her back on in a second here, because it's going to be a wild gang. Oh, it's definitely a catfish. Well, 
I'll tell you what, it's been a couple of minutes, folks. I haven't gained any ground at all. Hey, Caleb, what do I do? Just keep pressure on them? Just keep steady pressure on them and uh, obviously don't don't give them anything, but you're gaining on them now. I think so, you're yeah. Them out. It's awful big, whatever it is. Oh my gosh, I think I'm getting them up, Caleb. Oh, there's, I saw my leader material. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. my gosh, look at the size of that thing. Oh. Caleb Zorn. <laughs> Holy cow. I'll tell you what, buddy. That thing just boom, boom, right? Big head shakes. That's a prehistoric fish. Man, is that something, huh, buddy? Now that, folks, I'll tell you what, you hook into that and it's going to be a while, isn't it? It is. How that big was, do you think that is? That This fish has got to be knocking on 20. Okay, stand up and, and hold him up if you can. I know that's heavy, but uh, where's my jig? Uh, in its mouth, pretty deep. Yeah. You know, years ago, we used to fish these with uh, blade baits in, in the in the, in the the uh, Fox River in Oshkosh. Oh, really? Yeah. But, I mean, look at that. I mean, and they actually bite. Yeah, they do. They're aggressive. Holy cow, buddy. What do you think, man? Prehistoric. Yeah. Like I said. We're going to get some walleyes, too. But, I mean, how do you not love seeing that? Hold them out, can you? Oh. Uh, well, that's heavy, huh? It is heavy. What are you thinking, 20? Yeah. Wow, that is something. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save $50 on the Markham M1 flasher system. On sale for $279.99. Just dragging a jig in the middle here. I didn't want to go. Well, there we go. There. Hey, hey Caleb. There nice. we go, buddy. No net needed. No net needed on that one. I got that. Now I put that pin. We're, we're trying. Uh, Caleb, tell the folks how we, many different things we're trying we here. We tried a lot. We hit a little bit of a lull here. And of course, that'll happen on the river. But uh, we've been switching to everything. And you put on a jig in the middle. And you're dragging it real slow along the bottom. And that's, oh, look at oh, that. Oh. McGillis. There he is. Yeah, let's go. All we got to do is have McGillis whine a little that they're not biting. Here he is. Here yeah. he is. Little Walt there, John. All right. Maybe our bite is going to start. No, this has been a tough hour and a half since the catfish right it is slowed down but we had two fish in two minutes yeah what, what are you using i'm using a paddle tail paddle tail yep all right caleb the bite is on buddy let's go hey you know seriously though chris you know you're one of those guys you you'll switch baits all the time won't you you got to keep trying different things different spots got to keep moving john okay another one on the jig and minnow here buddy Let's see what we got. Oh, they're not big walleyes now. Oh. Actually, hold that up because the the um, the last cut this morning we were this, getting bigger walleyes. I guess yeah, is my point, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, they're kind of the size is going down as the day's going on. Yeah, but let's talk again now. So in the fall, once it gets cold, the shad move in here. Is that the deal? The shad move in. They start pushing up the river. You know, there's a lot of discharges, like we said, and the game fish will be right behind the shad, whether they're walleyes, muskie, anything. You know, the northern, these fish will be chasing the, those shad around. Now, if we finally do get some real cold weather, um, guys I actually ice fish this river, right? Oh, yeah. They'll be usually the last couple of years, guys are ice fishing fishing by now. Yeah, right. Now that's a nice little legal walleye. That's about a 15 and a half, 16 incher. And I gave him a long time. And look at that minnow. He doesn't even have that down there yet. No. Folks, when the bite gets slow like it did this afternoon, one of the best things that you can do on a river system is use a jig and a minnow. And uh, these are river shiners. And actually what I'm doing with them and dead hooking them. And I'm using a pendu jig. Now the pendu jig has a hook that swivels up and swivels down. So when that jig head is sitting on the bottom, the live bait is actually elevated like that a little bit. And Caleb, I don't think we can tell the folks to move it any slower than we are. If you're moving it slow, you should go slower, right? Yeah, John, I'm moving my, I'm just dragging mine off the bottom. And like he said, you can't go slow enough. And tell the folks how light the hit is. Oh, they're just picking it up. I mean, you you're, you almost second guess every single bite. You kind of reel up the slack and make sure that it is a fish before you set the hook. But we're going to do some, some night fishing this evening. But right now when the slow time is going, I'm glad you brought the live bait. <laughs> Me too. 
Hey, January 13th isn't that far away, and you're going to be at Lakeside Marina doing a muskie seminar. I'm going to give away my favorite fishing spots in the Midwest with Blake, and we're going to have free Johnsonvilles. Yeah, we got all of that. You're you're actually giving away your spot. I am going to talk about all the places to fish in the Midwest, and it'll be a lot of fun. We're having a Johnsonville lunch. That's going to be awesome. And again, that is what date? January 13th. I believe uh, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. it starts. 11 a.m. to 2.30. We can visit and chat with the people. And again, that is January 13th at Lakeside Marina in Oshkosh. Hey, we'll see you there. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, 20% off the Lakes and Rivers 2- and 3-person ice fishing hub shelters on sale starting at $119.99. And when you buy a StrikeMaster Lithium 24-volt 8-inch Life Flight ice auger, you get a free $50 Fleet Farm gift card. Hey, Josh Tygen here. You know, I guide all winter long in some very harsh conditions on Lake Superior and on the Inland Lakes. And one product I use a lot is Amazon Quick Shot. This allows me to keep my machines running smoothly all winter long, even in the worst conditions. Hey folks, I'm at Clam headquarters in Rogers, Minnesota, and Clam is known for always coming out with innovative, really cool ideas. And this Clam Predator, I've been wanting one of these for years and you made one for me. How does it work? You got it. It's a very well-engineered automatic hook setting device so you can fight a fish with a rod and reel. Now that's awesome for the type of fishing I do, whether it be brown trout, steelhead, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan. How does it work? You know, it's fairly simple. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, there are some videos online if uh, the viewers want to learn more. The tip goes in here. I've done this a bunch of times. This locks in place. That has now got the rod in position. You've got a flag so you can detect when a bite goes off. Now, when a fish pulls this, Oh, go. is Get that on. cool? Sets the hook for you, pick up the rod and fight the fish. There now, what about guys in Minnesota? So the nice thing about this is there's two features on this. You can pop this front end off, put this back end on. Now, this will set up in a situation where the line just gets pulled out, the flag trips, but it doesn't automatically set the hook. But you can still run over, grab it, and fight the fish. Hey, Matt, congratulations, the clam predator, man. I can't wait. For more information on all of our ice fishing gear, go to clamoutdoors.com. Pretty good afternoon of fishing, but the real reason we came up here is the nighttime bite. Right before dark and about an hour or two after dark, uh, these fish move up shallow towards the dam, right? Yeah, the low light periods, it'll push these fish up. They'll push the bait up into the shallow water and put a put put the feed bag on this time of night. Still plastics? Still plastics. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to a blade bait and a crank bait. Okay, let's get them. Yep. Hey, what do you got there? Little Walter, John. Well, we are getting towards that time of night there, buddy. Let's see, you need a net there for that guy? Yeah, that's a nice one too. Oh yeah, he there you go, it. Chris McGillis. That is a beautiful fish. Nice and <laughs> and that was on what, sir? That was on the paddle tail. Yeah, Staying that paddle tail's the deal today, man, isn't it? Yes, sir. And let's hold that up. That is beautiful. Fish, now, man. isn't that really? Turn around. There you go, yeah. buddy. There you go. And yeah, uh, fish, so, how are you working that? Working it slow. Hold I let them it, up. I let it sit there, John, for about. I don't know, three to four seconds, and it cranked it right when I was about to retrieve. Beautiful fish. Yeah, nice job. Get the net, get the net. Get... Oh, good job, Caleb. What do you got it on, buddy? Uh, I got it on a crankbait. On a guys. crankbait. That is so cool, buddy. There you go. Nice, nice walleye there, Caleb. Hey, Caleb, at night like this or in low light conditions, do you reel slower? Very slow, John. I was just crawling that crankbait, and I actually hit it twice. Really? And as soon as I felt it and I missed it, I stopped reeling and counted for about, I don't know, two, three seconds, and then picked back up on my second crank and hit it again. Can you believe catching these in the middle of winter in open water in a boat at night? No, not at all. This is <laughs> I ridiculous. want to see that fish, too. Oh, yeah. that's another beautiful gorgeous fish. fish, buddy. Look at the beautiful coloring on that walleye. And these are good to eat this time of year out of the river. Yeah, yep, definitely. A lot Nothing of different? Nothing different? them and eat them. Nope. Are you having fun? Yep. Ooh, Man, who's got John, one on here? I got one here. I'm going to need the net. I'm pretty sure this thing cranked it. Just smoked it, huh? Oh, gosh. Just slow rolling it. All right. All right. Don't miss this guy, guys. Nice job, <laughs> Caleb Zorn. I'll hey, tell you what, nice buddy. Nice job, man. Nice fish, buddy. Hey, how do you think McGillis is as a net man there? Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Is he a better personal injury attorney or a better net man, Caleb? 
Well, I hope I don't have to find that out, but he's a damn good net man. Yeah, and that's a beautiful walleye there, buddy. Again, a very slow, steady retrieve, huh? Yep, very slow, just slow rolling. You it. know, we said it several times today, this is remarkable. Fishing without gloves on, open water, in a boat, catching walleyes in the middle of winter, right? Can't beat it, especially this time of the year. Is that a female thing? Yeah, this is probably a female, John. Just uh, doing a, you know, trying to put the feed bag on before we get to winter, but um, probably a little behind schedule here. Hey, there we go. Brockaroo's got one on now. Brock, let's see if we can get a nice walleye here. There we go. Yeah. Way to go there, Brock. You're into the <laughs> walleye. Hey, Brock, that, that's pretty fun on a crankbait, isn't it? It's a blast, John. How did he hit that? I uh, just crushed it, slow rolling it, just like my buddy Caleb told me to do. Are you hitting the rocks a little bit? Ticking, yeah, ticking the rocks, and then I just slow it down and just, just constantly slow roll it over those rocks. And Good just... job, buddy. We're going to take a look at this one. Caleb, pretty impressive, the average size, isn't it? Yeah, John, these fish are beautiful. And, you know, for this time of year, usually we're ice fishing them, but you can see they're really putting on the putting on the weight there for the winter month. Good but, job, guys. Good job, Brock. Nice job, Brockaroo. Thanks, guys. Oh, my oh, gosh. Yes. Look at the head on that. Oh. And look at that mouthful of weed. Yes. Look at that pipe. Oh. Are you having fun with the tip oh, Having a great time. Love Beaver Dan. Oh. Look at that, Blake! Holy oh, cow! Oh my God. Look at that, Pike Blake! Oh this my gosh! Huge. Look at the size of this oh. pike! Oh my gosh! That is a trophy pike right there, pal. Oh, dude. oh man, is that, that gorgeous! Look at this guy, folks! This is a beauty! Oh, wait till you see the tummy on Look this guy! Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. I just said let's go, didn't I? Yeah, you know we we had a pretty good bite window there um, when the when that sun uh, or when the moon was coming up. Yeah, there you go, and, another uh, decent walleye right there. Yeah. But what a what a, what a wonderful day, huh, Caleb? It is, John. And you know, I want to mention again though that moon was rising and uh, we did pretty good there for for a good I don't know half hour, forty minutes. And, and then it just died for the last hour. Yeah, the last hour has just kind of been a struggle. Well, hey, thank you, buddy. And uh, as long as uh, we can get out in a boat this winter, buddy, let's go again. Absolutely. We may we go down to Chicago and try that. I would love for that. Yeah, thanks, Caleb. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know where we're going to fish at. We'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods.